Hi, did you know there are six different ways to monitor your baby's heart rate in labor? Hi, I'm Susan White, and I'm a childbirth educator with Childbirth Education for the Christian Family. I'm also an author and a certified nurse midwife. Stay tuned to the end to get all six methods. So when you think about fetal monitoring in labor, you think about this picture where the mom's laying in bed and she's got her fetal monitors on and they have to be on continuous. But did you know there are other options for continuous monitoring and for intermittent? Now, if you decide to get an epidural or you're going to get your labor induced or maybe you're high risk with diabetes or high blood pressure, you will need continuous fetal monitoring, but there are either other options for that. So let's go through the other choices. Also, just to let you be aware of what the fetal monitor actually is picking up, you can see on this paper that top line is the fetal heart rate. We like that to be between 110 to 160 for the rate. We also like to see what we call variability, which just means there's some variation in the heart rate. And we're looking for accelerations when the heart rate goes up and hoping not to see many decelerations where the heart rate goes down. The bottom line there that you're seeing that looks like little hills, that's how it's picking up contractions. And let's go on. So one option is to have an external fetal monitor and that can be used for continuous or intermittent monitoring. And we'll see that the pieces of the monitor, the top belt the mom's wearing, has a toco transducer, we call it, that's actually picking up contractions. There's a little button when the contractions happen and your belly gets hard, it causes the button to push in and causes the contractions to pick up. That bottom strap that she's wearing has an ultrasound transducer and that's picking up the baby's heart rate using ultrasound. So it sends sound waves into um, to pick up the beating heart and comes back and then the monitor turns that into an electronic signal. Now, a disadvantage of having to have continuous monitoring is that the mom has to stay either in the bed or close to the bed with an external monitor. And we know that upright positions and moving around in labor can help your labor progress. So kind of being stuck in the bed is a disadvantage, but you can stand beside the bed or sit in a chair next to the bed with an external monitor. Now, there is an option for intermittent electronic fetal monitoring, and that happens when we monitor your baby about 20 minutes out of every hour in labor, and then we take it back off again. This is appropriate for low-risk moms, so you're not being induced, you don't have an epidural, and you don't have any high-risk medical conditions. And if that's true, then your physician or midwife may give an order that you can have intermittent electronic fetal monitoring, which obviously you can get up and move around and get in all the cool positions that can help your labor progress. Now, there is a new option for wireless fetal monitoring now. This is an example of one that's called Monica from GE, and it's very cool, new technology, so that what happens is the monitor is actually attached to mom's belly, and it picks up the fetal heart rate and maternal heart rate with the electronic signal, and it also picks up contractions at the same time, all with this one piece. It is wireless, which means mom can get up and walk around. She can try all different positions, and it still picks up well. So if you're interested in wireless fetal monitoring and you have a reason that you do need continuous monitoring, that may be a great option. You'll need to check and see if that's available at the hospital where you're gonna have your baby. Now, this is another option for continuous fetal monitoring, and this is with internal fetal monitors. Now, when would these be indicated? If, for instance, we're having trouble picking up the contractions or tracing the fetal heart rate, maybe baby's moving around a lot, or maybe we're running Pitocin for you to have your labor induced, and we really need to see what's happening with the contractions and the fetal heart rate, and they're not tracing well with the externals, then we may need internal fetal monitors. So how does this work? You see there's an intrauterine pressure catheter that is a small catheter that actually goes up inside the uterus. It picks up the strength of the contractions. The external monitors for contractions do not, but with an IUPC, the intrauterine pressure catheter, we can actually pick up the strength of the contractions. 
The other one is the fetal scalp electrode, also called fetal spiral electrode. There is a little electrode on the end that actually attaches to the baby's scalp and that picks up the fetal heart rate better. So the disadvantages, obviously, these are more invasive. They go up inside. And because of that, mom has to have her membranes ruptured, her water has to be broke, and to be dilated enough to insert them. Since they are invasive, there is the risk of infection. Also, if we get to the point that we need the internal monitors for continuous monitoring, pretty much the mom has to stay in bed at that point. So they are invasive, so we try to not use these unless there is a medical reason. Another option that we have is intermittent auscultation. And that can be done with a Doppler or a fetoscope. So in this picture, you see that we're actually using a Doppler to do intermittent auscultation. And this mom is in her labor tub. This is great if you are low risk. It is approved by ACOG, that's the Physicians Organization for OB, and Nurse Midwives Organization have all approved this to use for low risk women. We know in the research that intermittent auscultation is just as safe as continuous fetal monitoring for low risk women. The outcomes are just as good. And obviously there are great advantages. You have the ability to move around and get in different positions and get in the shower or the tub. And so it's very helpful. Now, if you're planning to have a birth at a home birth or in a birthing center, then more than likely they're going to be doing intermittent auscultation. So there again, it can be done with a handheld Doppler a handheld Doppler uses ultrasound, just like the external fetal monitor. The other option for intermittent auscultation is with a fetoscope. And not as many people use these anymore, but you may have a midwife in a birth center or a home birth situation that wants to use a fetoscope. And you'll notice it's got a little piece on it that actually goes on the forehead of the provider so that she can listen better it's hard to hear the fetal heart rate, for example, if you try to use a plain stethoscope. But with the fetoscope, it's made so that you can actually hear the baby easier. It uses bone conduction in the head to be able to pick that up. And there again, intermittent auscultation is approved by physicians and nurse midwife organizations for low risk women. So it is a great option if you're having a home birth and birth center especially. If you're having a hospital birth, they still should have availability for intermittent auscultation with the handheld Doppler. So there are your six options. So I hope you've enjoyed this information and it should empower you to get with your provider, your physician or nurse midwife or midwife and discuss your options for fetal monitoring to choose what is best for you. Thank you. If you like this, please click like and subscribe. Also in my description below, you will see my website. You can check out our childbirth education classes. Thank you.